So, like, we live in an era now where, you know, everything is broken down and, and everyone's so super sensitive. But the reality is it's not that you're sensitive about the comedian or what's being said. It's you're sensitive about your situation. And you want other people to uh, uh, validate that, you know. Like I said, you know, everybody everybody was good with COVID until their grandma got it. And then it was like, my grandma got that shit. I, I don't play that shit. It was like, yeah, but last week it was you not getting vaccinated. You know, so I think we've developed this position of it, it, it sensitivity. It's, it's a little soft. We've become very soft as a society, you know, because we we nothing is to be uh, just allowed to be, you know, like somebody somebody says something about mental health. And the first thing we want to do is, oh, you can't you can't you can't bother people mental health. And, you know. I said this with the the athletes. I'm like, yo, there's a certain level that I, I can't really be getting into this mental health, protect my mental space with the athletes. Not to say they're not deserving of mental health, but the reason you get $30 million a year is because you play basketball, not because you're a hell of a guy. So the mental health part, I don't want to hear about you trying to be a hell of a guy and it's hard to do that because you're mental. Well, okay, then you don't have to play basketball. You can do something less stressful. But society now the internet social media it makes opinions perception you know like somebody can post what they think of something and someone will repost that make it a meme which is dangerous because niggas don't read so if you post in a meme niggas believe it just like people think michael jordan owns prisons because somebody had a meme don't realize that michael jordan is a very common name and is about a thousand people named Michael Jordan, but you put it in a meme, we believe it. Short, quick burst of information, we believe it. So the internet and social media is dangerous because opinions become perception and perception becomes reality. So that's the worst part about the sensitivities of now. And then when it comes to comedy, it's it's like honestly, what I see with comedy is, is that's the last thing you can do to a comedian, try to try to sanction him or censor him. You know, like, uh, I think I think Steve Harvey had said it best. And a lot of people didn't even understand what Steve Harvey was saying. Steve Harvey was saying when he does another comedy special, he's probably going to be done with TV. Meaning. When he does another comedy special, he wants to talk freely, but he knows that talking freely might get him some backlash on the business. End, and he's still on TV. So he was saying. plainly. I, uh, what do you call it? He said, I am corporate based. Dave Chappelle is subscription based. Meaning Dave don't have no boss. Netflix ain't Dave boss. Netflix is Dave's partner. Dave Chappelle's career is built off of the people. People come see Dave. People sell out his shows. Steve's career is a lot. He got a lot of TV stuff. He got a lot of TV, got a lot of production, got a lot of radio. So when he says something offensive, they can sanction him. Coca-Cola can call him up like, yo, you want that million dollars we sponsor your show for? Yeah, then shut the fuck up. Can't nobody do that to Dave. And so that's the freedom that Steve was speaking of. As a comedian, you really can't stop us unless we're employed. You know, Tracy Morgan found out. I call it, they, they roll that podium out right in front of you. You fuck up, they roll that podium out. Next thing you know, you got, I apologize to uh, NBC and uh, the, the families. I said, because once you, because you work for them, your livelihood is based on them. You know, there's certain comedians that ain't free, you know, so you can't, everybody can't say whatever they want, you know, and uh, those that do, have a certain level of freedom that I don't think people like. So they, they try to sanction them, which is why the, when they dropped the special and the, and the transgender, the, the, the I don't want to misspeak them because I don't want to be disrespectful of them either. And it's not because I'm afraid. It's just, they deserve respect. The, if, the, the, the communities deserve respect. So I don't want to misspeak it. So I'll just say when Chris, when Dave did the, uh, the thing on his last special about the LGBTQ T LGBTQ, community and it was such backlash it's because that's all they had you know and and what they did was it wasn't 
screw Dave, it was screw Netflix because they can only they can't grab the person, but they can grab them businesses. Netflix let them know, nah, Dave, Dave good. Why? Because they make more money with Dave than they do than they would lose by your threats or your displeasure. They make more money fucking with Dave than they do by you saying I'm canceling my subscription. So when it comes down to business, Dave got the people. Steve got the checks, you know, and until he gets free of that, then he feels as though he can't work freely as a comedian because of the climate we're in where people are so sensitive and offended. But with comedy, it's really like you really can't stop us. So that's why I think that it's so much, oh, well, you know, he shouldn't say that, he shouldn't say that, because the reality is comedians, we have no bosses. Nobody's going to tell us what to say. Then as long as it's funny, somebody's going to laugh at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I appreciate you going into that because, it's, it's, like I say, it's great to have a comedian's perspective. A lot of times you look at the comments, there's a thousand people talking about COVID, for example, but they're not doctors, they're not scientists, they're not, you know what I'm saying, experienced in no right. shape, form, or fashion. 